Chester Helsky and Keanu Reeves, as though there could be any doubt as to uh, who, they are. Who, we were, who we were talking about. I thought it was very, just listening back uh, to the interview, because we did it uh, a while ago, is, is when I said to him, what was the toughest scene? And he says, what you're asking is which was the most That's fun. enjoyable. Because that, and really, you couldn't approach this kind of movie if you didn't find all the stunts and the hard work that goes into that the most fun because yeah. it's exhausting to watch. Yeah, and the physicality of it is extraordinary. Um, just to pick up on a point that you made before we listened to that interview, that that interview was done a couple of weeks ago before the tragic loss of uh, Lance Reddick, who is obviously in this and Cedric in The Wire. So um, the statement from the makers of John Wick said, we are deeply saddened and heartbroken at the loss of our beloved friend and colleague, Lance Reddick. He was the consummate professional and a joy to work with. Our love and prayers are with his wife, Stephanie, his children, family and friends. We dedicate the film to his loving memory and apparently at the film's LA premiere on Monday night, which was the 20th, it was confirmed that a dedication to Reddick has been added okay. to the end of the film, I presume, because obviously we, films are largely digital now. It's easier to do that than before when you had to, when you'd have to recall the sort of the final reel of the 35. So apparently that has happened. Incidentally, um, also interesting here in that interview that uh, Albert Hughes is involved in that content. You know, big fan of Albert Hughes. Anyway, so on to the film itself. Um, as someone who wasn't um, a fan of the first John Wick film, I have to say that I think this series has got better and better. And I feel that this continues. It's also got bigger. They talk in that interview about we wanted a bigger picture. Yep, uh, it's big in terms of its scope, in terms of its body count, in terms of the choreography of its fight scenes. And indeed, I think in terms of its, and forgive me for saying this, underlying existential themes, which of course are exactly the same underlying existential themes that you would have in a, you know, a samurai film or a Yakuza film or a, you know, a, a hitman film. I mean, this is something to which cinema returns time and time again. You know, the, the person who's, they have a, they have an inner soul, but their outer character is that they are just a killing machine. It was interesting in that interview when you were referring to the shirt that Keanu Reeves was wearing. And he said, well, maybe it's the shirt that John Wick, the married man mm. might've worn, but not John Wick, the assassin. So, this brings in a bunch of new element. It's interesting when Keanu Reeves talks about, well, nunchucks, you know, he's about to learn to do the nunchucks. Of course, never forget that in the not too distant past, nunchucks were completely banned on British screens. You could not have nunchucks in movies. They were taken out because the chief censor, James Furman, in a previous century, in the 20th century, end of the 20th century, believed that they were imitatable violence because they were things that you could buy. So he just took nunchucks out. And there's one of the Toxic Avenger movies, or maybe it was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies, in which uh, one of the heroes picks up uh, a string of sausages and uses it as nunchucks, and they cut that because they thought it looked too much like... Um, seriously, it was mad. So it's quite interesting now hearing, oh, yeah, there's the nunchuck stuff, which is kind of... It's very cinematic, and you can see the pleasure that Keanu Reeves takes in having obviously learnt to do all the nunchuck stuff. Um Donnie Yen's character is kind of a riff on the Zatoichi Blind Swordsman character. And I think that kind of works well in terms of placing it within the archetypal, you know, the, the archetypal heritage of this kind of story. There is a lot of physicality to the action. And we've talked before about uh, fighting in these movies being like dance. Well, there's a scene in this which makes the most of that, in which a fight sequence happens in the middle of a disco and nobody notices because the fighting looks pretty much like the dancing. I mean, there are people on the dance floor and they're flailing around. And then in the middle of them, there's John Wick and a very large uh, chap. And they're fighting and beating each other up. But actually, take two steps back. It just looks like everyone's dancing. I mean, I know it becomes kind of ludicrous because it's yeah. like, would you really carry on dancing to that banging no. beat whilst people are being thrown over balconies? No. And But it does make the point that what you're doing in this is, it, you know, it's, it is choreographed dancing. When Keanu Reeves was talking about the taking pleasure in those things, I always think of, you know, Gene Kelly or Fred Astaire, Fred Astaire, you know, famously saying, it, you just put the hard work in, you have to put the hard work in, it is painful, but the end result is something kind of oddly beautiful. Um, there's also, you talked about the Arc de Triomphe scene, which he referred to as car mm -hmm. I know it's not the first time that phrase has been used, but it is lovely because it, it, that reminds me of like Baby Driver, which is basically a dance movie that happens to have cars uh, as the dancers. There's a, there's a scene in which the camera goes overhead 
and watches an entire highly choreographed fight sequence playing out in a number of different rooms. Remember this? And the the camera, which is really kind of elegantly done. It's like they've sat down and thought, okay, as we said, big, you know, scope. How are we going to do it? Okay, why don't we do a kind of God's eye view of one of these fights? Um, In a previous film, you had Death by Book, which was one of my favourite things. Here you have a killer card game, which again, you know, it must have been, how are we going to... Okay, that'll work. The staircase scene, and I think it's fine to talk about this because it has been talked about a lot. There's a scene in which he has to get to the Sacre Coeur, and it's however many hundred stairs it is. And actually, you know, the the radio announcer voice says, you know, I wonder how he'll get up those stairs. So that sequence, immediately you start thinking about things like Tony Jaa in uh, Tom Yung Gong in Protector, because staircase fights are... You know, they're a particular pleasure. I thought the Sacre Coeur sequence was terrific. And I also thought that the gag, which I'm not going to spoil, which had the screening I was in, only had sort of, you know, five or six people in it because I only saw it just on Monday. Most people had seen it by that point. Um, or Tuesday morning, pardon me. The whole audience laughed out loud at the audacity of what they had done. And I thought, this is the thing. It's, you know, the film is about violence and killing and murder, but it isn't. It's kind of joyous. There is a real joy in the physicality of it. Keanu talked in that interview. Keanu, look at me. Reeves uh, talked about it. It's tension, but also funny. And the funny has always been really important. There's the thing in the trailer, which is, yeah. Not really, which is, I can't do it, obviously, but it's, he's really good at delivering that stuff. There's only a couple of things that that occurred to me that I think are, I mean, for, one of them is, you remember we used to have that thing about who's driving the boat? Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's a scene, and I, if somebody go and see this and correct me, there's a scene in which he gets broadsided by a van. The van doesn't appear to be dri- being driven by anybody. I Right, I don't, rem- I don't no, remember that. No, of course that, not. But-, but if anyone's seeing it, when he gets broadsided by the van... Who's driving the van? A second thing, often spent a lot of time wondering, who sets up all the food and wine in the tables? And wherever they go, it's, you know, I mean, literally wherever they go, somebody has set up an incredibly, and completely under the cover of night, you know, this is suddenly a huge banquet is available wherever Beautiful. they are. The final thing is, and this had never really occurred to me before, one of the interesting things about Keanu Reeves as an action star is he appears on screen to have fairly small feet and he's almost slightly pigeon-toed and it, what it does is it creates this weird thing about him I, I love watching him you know physically on screen but it's like from the top up he's John Wick and from the waist down he's Elvis Costello and there is a Interesting. there was a really but what's fascinating about it is the way in which he walks the way in which he's you know he's gay because I'm, I'm watching a lot of it because it's like a dancer he has a strange gait which is on the one hand, very powerful, but on the other hand, weirdly fragile. There is something about the way he walks that makes his character seem oddly vulnerable. You know the thing with if your toes are turned slightly in, it's kind of, uh, Costello was the classic thing, it's kind of like, you know, if you stand with your feet, if you look at the cover of Live Stiff's Live, Nick Lowe's feet splayed out, Elvis Costello's feet turned in, and it, and it makes them look like very different characters. There is something about... Th- Keanu Reeves' gait, which perfectly suits the character, which is that on the one hand, he's an unstoppable killing machine. On the other hand, he's fundamentally vulnerable. He's John Wick and Elvis Costello. I really enjoyed it. John Wick 4, uh, John Wick Chapter 4. Um, did you enjoy it? I did, I did enjoy it. Um, it's it's long, just going prepared. It is prepared. long. <laughs> it's, you know, we don't get to the Sacre Coeur steps for about two and a half hours, and then there's a mighty old battle. If you go to see it in cinema when there's 15 minutes of trailers, go for a wee just before the point. film starts. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? Yeah, and if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I I would. I have done. Excellent.